Look at you. These are gonna be easy to adopt. Hey dog lovers, welcome to Wagging Tails Unleashed, where we discuss all things man's best friend. I'm the dog father, James, and this is my co-host, Zion. And today we're gonna talk about shelter dogs. Okay, here's the offer you can't refuse. If you sit here and behave, you'll get all you can eat treats. Deal? Okay, so if you clicked on this video, it's because you're interested in getting a shelter dog. A shelter dog could be an amazing experience. Zion and our other dog, Obi, are both shelter dogs and they are amazing. They're such a blessing. So we're gonna discuss all the things to consider when picking out and deciding what shelter dog is right for you. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you're notified when we put out new videos. Well, let's get right into it. Okay, so you've decided you want to adopt a dog from a shelter. It's a great choice. There's so many amazing dogs that are just waiting to be adopted, waiting to be loved and enrich your life. But before we get into what you need to know and consider before you adopt a dog, let's talk about a few reasons why a shelter dog may not be the right fit for you. Okay, let's say you have a very specific breed that you're dead set on getting, like a full-bred Doberman or German Shepherd or Beagle, whatever it is. That might be challenging to find at a shelter. Most of the dogs there are gonna be some kind of a mixed breed. Sometimes you could find a purebred, but uh, it's gonna be very difficult. So if you're really set on a certain breed and you're not willing to compromise, a shelter dog might not be the right fit for you. Also, if you're looking for a functional dog, a working dog, let's say you're on a farm and you want a livestock dog, or you want a dog specifically for guarding and protecting your house, it might be a little difficult. Again, it's hard to find the exact breed that you want. And in those situations, you know, some of these dogs are gonna have, they're gonna have a background, they're gonna have some kind of baggage, and they're gonna be mixed breeds, so you might not know exactly what type of dog you're gonna get. So in that case, your best shot is probably going to a reputable breeder and getting a dog at eight, nine, 10 weeks old. But other than that, if you're just looking for a great dog to love, then a shelter dog could be an amazing addition to your family. And the last thing I wanna bring up is your experience level. If it's your very first dog and you know nothing about dogs, a shelter dog might be a little more challenging. Doesn't mean you can't get a great dog, but you need to understand that the dog you have you're not gonna know the background and it's gonna take a little more work. But again, I don't wanna discourage you. You could still find a great dog, but these are things to consider. So putting that out of the way, you've decided you wanna get a shelter dog. Why is it so important to consider all of the things that are gonna go into making the right choice? The last thing you wanna do is to adopt a dog, bring it to your house and realize, ah, this isn't the right fit, and then have to return the dog. All right, that's just gonna add trauma to the dog's life and you really don't want that. So you wanna make sure you've, you've given this thought, you've done some research so that before you even walk into the shelter, you have a decent idea of what to expect, what you want, having realistic expectations so you can make the best decision for you and your family. So the first thing to consider, and this is in no particular order, is where do you live? What's your living situation? Are you in a little apartment in the city? Are you in a house? Do you live on a farm? These are things you wanna think about because there are different types of dogs that are better for different situations. If you live in a tiny little apartment and you have neighbors north, south, east, and west, you probably don't want a yappy Yorkie that's gonna be constantly barking and then all your neighbors are gonna hate you. Or if you get a breed that really requires a lot of exercise and wants to be able to run around, again, if you're in a little apartment, that might be challenging. But soon I'm gonna do a video on the best dogs for apartments. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you'll know when that video comes out. So another thing to consider is your lifestyle. Are you very active? Are you on the go a lot and you want an energetic dog to take along with you? Are you more just very chill and after work you just wanna come home, you just wanna relax on the couch and you want a dog to just sit by your side and be nice and chill? These are things you wanna think about. Are you single and you're at work all day and your dog's gonna be home for a while? You're gonna want a dog that's maybe a little more independent and not very clingy. 
Are you married and maybe the husband's out working all day, but the wife works from home and she's gonna be home with the dog a lot? All right, you could have a dog that requires a little more attention. Do you have a family and have little kids or maybe a baby? That's another big consideration. There are some breeds that are not ideal for babies. So that's, that's a big one you wanna think about. Next, you wanna consider different breeds and temperaments. It's really a good idea to look into some different breeds that you're interested in, realizing you might not get a 100% breed, but a lot of these dogs are gonna be mixes. And if you have an idea of the type of breeds that have more of the temperaments that would fit with what I already mentioned, your lifestyle, your living situation, that's really gonna help you out. If you see a dog that's like, okay, this is a mix between a German Shepherd and a Husky, for example, you've done some research and you realize, okay, Huskies are really friendly, but they're a little stubborn. German Shepherds are, are good guard dogs. And you know, and you can make your decision based on that. Another consideration is your finances. Obviously, if you get 100% pound dog, it's gonna cost a lot more to feed a dog like that than a little eight pound Yorkie. Also, some breeds have more health issues, which means there's gonna be more vet bills. So again, when you're researching different breeds, you'll find out which dogs have, you know, some, some health issues that are associated with them. The good thing about a lot of shelter dogs is most of them are mixed breeds and a lot of times they're actually healthier than a purebred. Purebreds tend to have some uh, genetic traits, uh, problems that are like passed down. Another thing to consider is allergies. Do you have allergies to fur and dander? Now dogs either have fur which is what sheds, and that's usually what has the dander that's gonna make people allergic, uh, versus hair. Hair grows and needs to be groomed, but dogs with hair tend to be hypoallergenic. And the last thing I wanna mention is understanding basic body language. Uh, why would this be important? Uh, when you walk into the shelter, you're gonna be assessing these different animals and, and you wanna get a read for where they're at. Body language is, is the number one way that they communicate. They communicate through barking, but body language more so. And they're always, they're always communicating. And it's, it could be subtle, but you could pick it out if you know what to look for. Body language could tell you so much whether this dog seems to be pretty well adjusted considering he's in a shelter or whether he has a lot of trauma and he's really scared. And those dogs could still be adopted and great dogs, but they're gonna take more work. I think our chickens have something to say here. So you can jump on YouTube and just do a search of basic dog body language and you can find plenty of videos. Just watch a few of them just so you can get a basic idea of what to look for. If you're getting value from this content, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell so that you can be notified when we put out new videos. Okay, so you've done your homework, you're ready to pick a shelter. Look in your area, see what shelters are around, check out their ratings, and give them a call and make sure that you're able to actually take them for a walk. You want to be able to see the dog outside of the environment of his cage, outside of the building, that he's in and ideally if they have like an enclosed area in a fence where you could even take them off the leash and just have them run around, that's your best chance to, to see how they act outside of the stressful environment of the cage in the building that they're in. You also wanna pick an off day. During the week is best. You don't wanna go on the weekends when they're gonna be busy because you wanna be able to have time to talk to the people that work there and get as much information about the dog as possible. If it's packed on the weekends, they're gonna be dealing with all these different people. So you just, you wanna pick a nice slow day during the week, that's your best bet. If you have kids and you can, bring them. You definitely want to see how the dog is going to react to your kids. They might act differently towards an adult versus a kid and obviously you want a dog that's going to be safe for your kids especially if you have like a five or six or seven year old. You also want to bring some treats and maybe like a variety of treats. If a dog is so scared that he won't even take food from you then that's that's something to be concerned about that dog's going to take a lot more work but if they're they're eager to take some some treats from you then then that's that's helpful and have a little variety we'll have linked below some of our favorite choices of treats okay so you picked out a shelter and you're ready to check out some dogs recently i went to the shelter that i got zion and obi from and i took some footage and i'm going to show that alongside with as i'm talking to you just to kind of show you some of the things that you want to look out for ladies i'm working here when you first walk in, they're most likely all gonna start barking and just the energy is gonna be high. And you know, that's, that's just how it is. That's not gonna be a true gauge of the temperament of the dog per se. And I'm gonna show you an example of this, this one particular dog. We walked in 
And this dog was acting like a maniac. And she was like violently just spinning and spinning in her cage. And Lee said to me, uh, this, this dog is like aggressive, be, be careful. After a few minutes, we're looking at some other dogs. I came back around to her cage and then I actually kind of like knelt down and she stopped spinning, she stopped barking and she was just kind of sitting a little chill. All of a sudden, I saw this dog calm down. She went from looking like Cujo to halfway normal. So a little later, I'll show you some footage of the walk that we took and we'll talk a little bit more about our experience with that dog. But back to when you first walk in, uh, this is where studying up on body language is gonna be really important. When you walk over to a dog, you wanna observe them. Even when you first walk in, there might be a lot of dogs barking and the energy might be high, but just look around at some of the other dogs. You just kind of kneel down. You don't wanna face them head on because they take that as confrontational, especially if they have some issues. You wanna just be turned off to the side. Try not to look directly at them, just look over to the side and just get a gauge and observe how they act. Now, you might want a really calm, chill dog. You might see a dog that's pretty still, just sitting there in their crate, and you might be thinking, hey, this is, this is a nice, calm dog. Not necessarily. If they're at the far corner of their crate, and their body looks stiff, and their ears are down and back, and their eyes are really wide open, right? This is a sign, most likely, that this dog is really scared and, and they're timid and, and they have some issues. Versus if you have another dog where you know, their eyes are more relaxed, maybe their ears are more relaxed, uh, and just th their body movement, they might just you know slowly walk over to you, their body isn't stiff, they might be just kind of like stiff sniffing around. That could be a sign of, of a dog that's, that's more chill. So learning this body language is gonna help you read their energy. That's what you wanna do. You wanna get a feel for their energy. So there were these two beautiful dogs that we saw. They were right next to each other in their crates. Uh, it turns out they were both abandoned by the same owner. They don't know who the owner was, but they were pretty, pretty mild-mannered. So one of them was barking a little bit. The other one was just sitting there, kind of chill. I just went over to the cage, knelt down. My body turned a little bit to the side. The one barked a little bit, but, but not aggressive. The other one wasn't barking. And I was just, you know, checking him out. His ears looked normal, his body body language looked normal. They, they looked both pretty chill, but just, just by reading their body language, we could tell that these weren't, these weren't dogs that had like no training and were just off the wall. These were pretty well adjusted dogs. We took them for a, a walk later and we brought them into a fenced area and had them play. So here you're gonna see some footage of these two dogs that I just mentioned. They were beautiful. They were a husky shepherd mix, uh, abandoned by the same owner. And you could see they're playing with each other. They obviously know each other well. And my wife and I were sitting there and they were kind of like a little aloof as far as we were concerned. They were just out doing their thing. But that, that's okay, let's just give it a little time. Uh, after, you know, five, 10 minutes, we would call them and they would come over to us and give us a few kisses. So, so they were paying us some attention but not just all up in our space. So these dogs seemed pretty well adjusted. So when you're talking to the people that work there, try to get as much information about the backstory of these dogs. They might not always know the breed, but they usually have a, a decent idea of, you know, the mixes that they might, they might have. But sometimes it's more important their temperament. You could have a German Shepherd, very well adjusted, great dog. Another one might've had a, a ton of trauma in their lives and they're really damaged and they could have a totally different temperament. So it's not as cut and dry as this breed equals this temperament. I mean, there's, there's a general uh, personality trait that comes with breeds, but life situations could really change how they, they act in their emotional health. Okay, so you find a dog that you're checking out their body language, like this one seems okay, I wanna take them for a walk. So you take them on a walk. Now, I'm gonna use the example going back to uh, the dog that acted like Cujo in the beginning. We took her for a walk. Now, some of the things that you wanna look for. Uh, obviously, they're probably not gonna be perfect walkers. You know, a lot of them might pull. That's, that's to be expected. That's something that you're gonna to have to work on once you get them. So as you're walking with them, just observe them. You know, are they being totally aloof? Are they jumping all over you? Or are they 
you know, just checking out the environment. They're sniffing around. That's pretty normal for a dog. And after you're walking for a few minutes, give them a call and, and see, see if they come. If they come over to you, that's a good thing. You know, with uh, Oreo, she'd be just sniffing around, pretty chill. And then we would uh, call her over. She would come over, she would sit. She even gave me a little lick. So, you know, she was actually acting somewhat normal. So we finished the walk and it was a successful walk. So I was talking to the woman that worked there. And again, she was telling me that when, when she walks, she's, she's fine. When she's put into the fenced area, off leash that's when she sometimes gets a little a little too rambunctious with her playing and she play bites so we brought her into the fenced area it was me and my wife and within a minute or two she started jumping up on lee and so i i redirected her attention to me and then this is where i saw the play biting so she started she started jumping on me and play biting now she wasn't being aggressive but she was being way too rough now i didn't get this on video but um she definitely played way too hard. So what they call this in training is she had very poor bite inhibition. This was actually a big problem. This could be the one reason that this dog would not be adopted. But we didn't realize this until after we took the walk and then after we brought her into that closed area. Now this doesn't mean that this dog is not adoptable, but this dog's obviously, it's going to take work to teach this dog a better bite inhibition. This would be an example of, if you were gonna take on this dog, you would have to have some experience and, and realize, okay, this is a sweet dog, but she needs work. But, you know, I just feel this connection and, you know, I'm willing to put in the work to teach her how to play respectfully and, and not to, <laughs> not to end up hurting someone. So when you're at the shelter, take some time, check out a few dogs, take them for a walk, take some mental notes. And if there's a particular dog that you liked, it'd be a good idea to come back another time and do another visit with them. The second time that you, you go there, they might remember you and they might even open up a little more. So, so don't be so quick to just rush that first day into taking a dog. But at the end of the day, this isn't always an exact science and you could do all your homework and you could think, all right, these are the types of dogs that I want. And you could go to the shelter and you could look around. Sometimes you got to trust your gut and you might just have this instinct where you see this dog and you just know this is the dog. So once you've decided this is the dog for me, you want to make sure that you have all the items that you need before you even bring the dog home. It's a good idea when you first bring the dog to your house, don't just bring them directly into your house. Take them for a nice walk because this is gonna be a little traumatic for them. All right, get them just acclimated and, and calm down and then you can bring them into your house. Unless you're a trainer and extremely experienced with dogs, it would be a good idea to enroll your dog in some uh, puppy basic training classes. We did that with Zion and it was very helpful. Another good idea, once you bring him into your house for the first couple days to a week, let him have his space, let him acclimate. If he comes over to you and wants affection, great, but just let, let him adjust to this new environment. And lastly, be patient. Give him time to adjust. Show him that you're gonna be a good, loving leader. And in time, your relationship will grow. And I'm pretty confident that you're gonna have a great, loving dog. Shelter dogs, in my opinion, are the most appreciative dogs because they remember where they were and where they are now. It's an amazing experience and I'm so excited for you and your journey with your new adopted shelter dog. So if you already have a shelter dog, in the comments below, give us a little backstory. Tell us how you came to adopt your furry friend. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so and hitting that notification bell. And if you check our description box below, we'll have linked some of our other videos, plus some of our favorite products that we use to spoil our furry friends. Zion is really holding me to these all you can eat treats and he wants to recommend these treats, which are his favorite. We'll have them linked below. So from Zion and myself, we hope to see you here again and we hope that you have a perfect day.